man, it's been, uh, it's been a great weekend. We just got back from a retreat. Uh, give some love for the retreat, yeah? Yeah. Uh, a lot of strategy, strategizing, a lot of strategizing, lots of, uh, uh, a lot of planning, and we got a lot of things that we're going to change up this, uh, this coming year, and we're just excited for TLC. We're excited for what we're going to be doing, so we want you guys to be a part of it, and I want you guys to engage in that. So a couple, a couple quick announcements. First announcement, community group resumes this Friday. Now, check this out. At the retreat, we're talking about everyone should be part of a small group. Everyone should be part of a small group. Uh, it's how you get fellowship. It's how, fellowship, again, it's not about what? It's not about eating or drinking. It's about really getting deep with each other, really being able to account, keep each other accountable, really being able to share with each other. Everyone should be part of a small group. If you guys are not, uh, down with the small group that we have, or you know, you know, it feels like a little bit off your date, or it's not going well for you, it's cool. Start your own, right? Start your own. We'll let you know how to do it. Get a bunch of people together that you feel comfortable being a part of, that you can share with. Start your own small group. We would love for that to happen. We would love for TLC, our EM ministry, for everyone to be part of a small group during the week. We have about four going on. One on Monday, which most of the college brothers and sisters go to. We got one on um, Thursday, which are most of our youth group leaders go to. We got Friday one, which is the one I lead. Uh, most of our young adults go to. We got one on Saturday, which is uh, most of our 1.5 Vietnamese speaking generation people go to, right? And we're going we're gonna to start a couple more. We have a few more in the works, and we would love for you guys to be a part of that. So I'm thinking about doing a marriage one soon. I'm praying about it still uh, for the resources and stuff. But once, once the Lord opens the possibility of doing a couple's one, I will definitely do that. But we're having a lot of things open. We want you guys to be a part of that. Uh, second thing. Oh, it's at Tim and Yui's house. Ooh, it's at Gong Wick's house. If you guys uh, been to the retreat, you guys ate the food. Gong Wick is a blessing to our ministry. She is like mother to us, right? So make sure you guys show a lot of love whenever you guys see her. Uh, she serves us. And you know, my love language is service. And so whenever she serves, I just feel really blessed by that. So uh, it's going to be at Tim and Yui's house. I'll just text it to you guys. I'll text it to you guys, right? Oh, yeah, this, this uh, Super Bowl weekend. Yeah, next, Seattle and Patriots. Who are we going for? Patriots. Who say Patriots? Oh, New England. You know, I, I love the Patriots because I love Bill Belichick, you know, game recognized game. He's a good man. He's a good coach. Uh, I would love Patriots to win, but I actually, you know, I like to root for the underdog, so hopefully Seattle wins too. But anyways, if you guys are not doing it, if you have no parties going on, or you guys are free, my house, uh, February 1st, we will have the channel working, guaranteed, okay? Channel 4, I have. I have Channel 4 for sure. I tested it out. I have Channel 4. Uh, and so come out. I think the game starts at 3.30. So 3.30, come out after church. It'll be a good time, okay? Uh, last announcement. We have men's and women's group. Because men's and women's group falls on Valentine's Day this year, we moved it. Second Saturday of February is Valentine's Day. I know y'all's got stuff you guys got to do. The husbands are like telling me we can't do men's and women's group. My wife is going to kill me. I, said, I feel you. I feel you. I got you. Don't worry. All right. All right. Let's scratch that for a little bit. We'll see what happens. Miscommunication. One thing we need to work on is communication still. All right. But uh, we will have a men's and women's group. I'll figure out what day to do it. Okay. Um, all right. Let's bow our heads. Let's get started. Father, I want to thank you for just uh, an incredible journey that you are taking us on. I thank you, God, for what you are doing in and throughout our English ministry. I just pray, Father God, for our church as a whole, that you are just going to build us together unify us as a church and father when we just go out and uh, be salt and light to the world and father even more we just learn to just love people love you and to love people that's our prayer god and lord may we have the joy of doing it and lord may we look into your word today and discover the beauty of joy of worshiping you and seeing you for who you are we love you we pray all these things in jesus name amen amen man we are going to the book of philippians and the book of philippians as you know is on the christian joy joy in the christian life Joy in the Christian life. A lot of us need some joy in our life. A lot of us need to experience joy in our life. And, you know, the first chapter of Philippians was basically this. You know, a lot of times you understand joy when you understand your identity. You understand who you are. You understand where you're at. You understand who you are before God. You have that identity. You have that, that rapport with him. And you know the freedom you have in that. That brings joy. Second thing, chapter 2, is really talking about joy and dealing with each other. Because a lot of times the one big thing that robs us of joy is each other, Right? When people complain, when people argue, when we fight, that robs us of joy. And just learning how to overcome arguing, understanding why we fight, understanding who Jesus is, what he did to allow for us to have joy, overcoming arguments. I didn't preach on this passage, but Evan did preach on it, our brother Evan. 
uh, last week. It's really joy in serving each other. Okay, joy in serving each other. That's basically joy in the Christian life for us before, before God and us before each other. But chapter three, we're gonna chapter three and onwards is just Paul bringing that mug home. He's gonna bring this idea of really experiencing joy in the Christian life. And I want to be able to hopefully pray that when we finish the book of Philippians, there is that. That, that hunger and that heart and that ability to really experience the Christian joy, all right? So that's my prayer for you guys as we get into this. So let me start with this. I had a buddy. Me and my buddy were sitting down one time. We are talking. And he's, uh, he, he goes to church all the time. Very good believer. Very uh, goes Sunday service religiously, right? Doesn't stop. And I remember one time we were playing pool together. And he, he just, you know, random conversation comes up when you hang out with your, bro, with your bros. And he said, hey, man, you're a pastor. I said, yeah. Tell me what heaven will be like. Tell me what heaven will be like. I want to know, man. Give me some. Give me some. Give me a taste of what's going to be like. I said, you know, we're going to be worshiping God for all eternity in heaven. And I kid you not, his face just went, what? what? No, no one told me that. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. You're telling me all I'm going to do for all eternity is worship God. I'm like, yep. And he was like, oh, my goodness. That's news to me. I'm like, all right, how about this? When I say worship God, what do you think I mean, right? It's, I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking singing, which is cool. I like singing, right? I'm thinking hearing God's word preach, which is good. I like God's word. I'm thinking about praying all the time, which is cool. I like praying. I don't know if I'm going to like it for all eternity, right? Like every single day I'm going to be doing that? That's crazy. Right? How, many, how, many, how many of you guys, when you guys think about that, that sounds almost like hell, right? Let's don't raise your hand, don't raise your hand, don't raise your hand, right? But, you know, sometimes you're thinking, dude, if that's heaven, that sounds more like hell to me, you know? I know y'all are thinking, don't lie, right? So I ask him, okay, why do you think we do that? Why do you think we, we, we sing and we reflect on God's word and we respond in prayer? Why do you think we do that? He was like, because we have to, right? It's in the Bible. I'm like, okay, kind of, right? But why do we have to? I mean, what, what's the reason behind that? And he's like, I don't know. I said, okay, well, let me tell you. And when you understand that, hopefully you understand what heaven is like, okay? The reason why we sing, the reason why we reflect upon God's word, the reason why we respond, this whole journey that we do Sunday and hopefully Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, sing, reflect, respond. The whole idea of worship is always to discover God. The whole reason why we do it is that every moment you are discovering God. You're discovering who you are in God. You're discovering who God is like that daily, daily, until the very end. And when you stop in this lifetime, you continue for all eternity because he's infinite. He's like, I don't know, man. I mean, that's cool, but I don't don't know how that feels like. I I told him, you know how it feels like. You just don't understand it yet. I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to you, okay? We've all experienced heaven right, in some sort of fashion and way. But we all experience a shadow of it, okay? Let me give you some pictures to get you guys understanding this of what it means to discover God. Hopefully, you'll, you'll understand a little bit more of what heaven and the beauty of heaven is. Heaven is like the joy of going on a new journey. You go to a new place, right? You're in a different land, right? You're excited about the culture, right? You can't wait to try the new food. You can't wait to see that scenery that everyone's talking about. You can't wait to meet the local. You can't wait to just experience people. It's a discovery of daily, daily discovering something new. Not just about yourself, but something about this unknown that you're in. That daily, it's, it's that excitement. You can't wait. You go to sleep, you wake up, you're excited about it, and you can't wait to experience it again. Heaven is like a shadow of that. Heaven is like the joy of all you gamers that are playing a video game, right? When you first got it, it's like it's shiny and new. You open the package, you open it up, you put it into your console, your, your computer, and then the, the story comes on, and you're just excited about leveling your guy up or, like, you know, figuring out what quest to go. I don't know, right? As long as you guys, and you, and you, and you understand that you can't wait because you fall asleep because you're so tired, but you can't wait to get up and just do the whole process over, just really discovering this new part, a new interaction with this game. Heaven is like a shadow, and a glimpse of that. Heaven is like learning a new skill, a, a skill that you really love doing. Learning how to um, surf, learning how to play an instrument, learning something that you just learn and you're just so excited that you can't wait to wake up in the morning to try it out again. You can't wait. You, you think about it. You can't wait to come up and discover more of it. 
right? Heaven, it's like falling in love, right? Heaven is like, yo, bro, come on, man, I'm preaching, son, right? All right? Heaven is like, heaven is my son, it's okay, right? Heaven, heaven is like, heaven is like falling in love, right? When you, when you stay up to three in the morning and you just can't wait to call that person up again in the morning just to say hi. Just say, how are you doing? So just say good morning, right? It's that feeling of constant discovery. It's a shadow and a glimpse of it. That's what heaven is. And so when we talk, when I ask you, when I say the worship of God for all eternity, what I'm really trying to get you guys to understand is that when we worship God, we're discovering God. And heaven is that, that we spend eternity discovering the infinite grasp of who he is. We go to sleep at night thinking, I cannot wait to see what depth he will show me the next day. I cannot wait to experience, to taste the culture, the beauty of him. I cannot taste, I cannot, I cannot wait to experience the joy of being with him. That's heaven. And do you know why we don't feel that way when we think about worship? You know why that joy doesn't come onto our hearts when we think about worship? It's because the reality is we're worshiping God the wrong way. We're worshiping God the wrong way. We're not worshiping God to discover God. We're worshiping God as a means to get what we want. And because of that, because you worship God in a very uh, superficial religious way, because you worship God in a very superficial religious action-based way, need way, not only do you lose out on the joy of discovery of who God is, you lose out on the heart of really experiencing Jesus and everything about him. Right? So today I'm going to talk about true worship. Uh, I pray that this message today is to reveal what true worship is first and foremost, and secondly, to reveal where your heart at is at when it comes to worshiping God. Hopefully we can really change that paradigm, change the way we think about it, and really kind of come and engage God in a very uh, beautiful way. Okay? So open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 3. Just three verses. Philippians chapter 3, you know. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. We're going to read verse 1 to 3. Okay? Worship is about the discovery of God. It is. It's the constant discovery of God. We live to worship because we live to discover our God. Our whole life after this, after this life ends is to worship God because we spend our whole eternity seeking to discover more and more of God, knowing that it will never end. Okay? Listen up. So after all of that, after all of talking about people and really finding joy with people, Paul begins to engage us in really finding joy in, in the worship of God. He says this, Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Rejoice in the Lord. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh, For it is we who are the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh. Right? There's a comparison that he's doing here. He's going to say, watch out for these guys. This is who we are. This is this comparison of what worship looks like. All right? So we're going to break it down first. First thing, true worship. True worship is freedom. True worship is freedom. Freedom. In this church at this moment, and actually in a lot of the churches that Paul preached at, this is what ended up happening. He goes into a non-Jewish area. He preaches the gospel, really brings a lot of people to Christ. And then these Gentiles, these non-Jewish people begin to believe in Jesus. And then right when he leaves, these Jewish people come down and they kind of mully on in, right? And they say, you know what? You're a Christian, yes. You know, I'm glad that's a good start, what you're doing right now. What you're doing, it's a great start. But let me tell you, in order to be a real Christian, in order to be a real Christian, you got to do this. You got to perform the Jewish duties. One thing, you got to get circumcised. So all you men out there, if you want to be a true Christian, you got to get circumcised. All the Gentiles are like, what? Right? I got to cut what? No. Right? Right? You got to be circumcised. You got to perform and be a part of the Passover feast. You got to do all the celebration. You got to do all of these. And when you do all of that, then you're a true Christian. Those people were called the Judaizers. Right? Fancy word. But Paul calls them dogs. Crazy, right? Man, Paul doesn't talk bad about people, but he called them dogs. He said true freedom, true worship is about freedom. 
See, the Jews, their whole entire history, they've always called anyone who's not a Jew a dog, right? If you're a Gentile, you're basically you're a dog. Those, those Gentile dogs, right? Those non-Jewish dogs. But Paul reverses that because the Jews thought that they were God's chosen people. They thought that, you know what, because we do this, right, God honors us. But Paul switches it up and says, you know, Gentiles, you are God's chosen people. These Jews, they're the dogs, right? They're the dogs because they think they're set apart by what they do. They think that they're set apart because of what they look like. They think that they're sort of set apart because they um, have something to show, right? But true worshipers, right, true worshipers, we're set apart because we're not circumcised physically. It's not about what we physically show, right, on the outside. It's what's happening on the inside. We're circumcised in the heart. That's what Paul is saying, okay? See, false worship, false worship is when you believe, when you believe that you have to be a certain way in order to come to God. You have to be a certain way first, and then you can actually approach God. True worship is freedom. What does this look like in the church? Let me give you an example. What does this look like in the church? And I'm not going to lie. You know, our church, we teach this. We do, right? Inadvertently. We don't want to teach it, but we teach it, right? We teach it like this. We say, you have to, you have to be right before you come. You got to get your act together, right, before you come back to church. There's a certain way in which you have to look if you want to be a part of our service, right? You have to come dress and be a certain person if you want to be part of our service, to want to encounter God. And the crazy thing is that we bought into that. We bought into that so deeply that most people, when they leave the church, they can't come back because why? They say, I don't feel right yet. I don't feel right to come back. I got, I got to get my stuff together before I come back. And Paul looks at that and he says, that are the teaching of dogs. They think, you think that you're God's chosen people by what you look like on the outside, how you perform, what you come as? You are God's chosen people based on what he has done on the inside. See, a true worshiper, come as you are. God says, come as you are. Don't put on the facade. Don't put on the mask. Don't play the game. Come as you are, and I will do the work in your heart. Don't try to set yourself up first and then hopefully come and I will bless. I will bless and you come as you are. Come as you are and I will speak to your heart. Let me ask you guys this question. Is this you? When you come to church on Sundays, when you, when you worship God, do you always have that kind of sinking feeling? I got to do, I got to get into my kind of mode first before I can worship God. I got to like, you know, set the ambience correctly before I can worship God. I got to have that right uh, uh facade or the right mask on before I can worship God. Do you do that? Do you, do you feel that way when you come to church? Do you know why a lot of times you can't discover God, you guys, for who he is and just the joy of it? It's because a lot of times you as a follower of Jesus Christ, you're not real before God. You're not transparent. You're not you, right? I want to ask, the person I see Sunday in these pews, is it the same person I see during the weekdays. That's all I'm asking for. Are you the same person that I see in the weekdays? I I love running into church people on the weekdays. It's like the funniest thing, especially when they see their pastor. It is so funny. It's like they just get, there's like this shock. It's like deer in the headlights. Oh, crap. You know, they they look around them for a second. They're like, why are you looking around for? I'm just just, just making sure that nothing's here. what would be there that would be incriminated? It doesn't matter, Pastor Tony. Um, how are you? It's good to see you. Welcome, right? It's all of a sudden like they kind of switch that mode. I got to turn on church mode. Right? I got to turn on church mode to be here. My goodness. So many times you, you miss out on the discovery of who God is because you don't come as you are. You come already with all these layers in front of you, all these walls set up. How are you going to see? How is God going to break down all those things before you can actually get to you? Right? Well, like, well, like uh, what's that Casting Crown song? Stained glass masquerade. Right? Everyone's here is broken. Everyone here is messed up. But we come with a smile, perfect smile, perfect faces, thinking that everyone is probably perfect, but they don't really see what's happening on the inside, right, on Facebook. Are you the same person on Facebook as you are at church on Sundays? I would love to see Facebook you, right? Show me Facebook. Don't do the selfies. No, there's no selfies in church, right? But, like, just seriously, right? Are you the same? When you talk, when you blog, when you... When you do, or is that the same person? Is that you? 
Are you, like, do you feel free to come like that? Is that, that that freedom that you have in Christ that I'm not judged? I don't, I don't come to church Sunday so afraid of being judged by what I dress like, what I look like, how I act, that I have the freedom to know that I am a son of God, daughter of God, and I can come as I am because that's how he received me as I am. He didn't, he didn't die for my worthiness, nor did he die for my unworthiness, right? Nothing of that brings me to He died because he chose to die for me, right? Who are you? Do you have that freedom when you come to church? Do you, do you sense that when you come? I'll give you a story. It was like this one of the sister of my old church. She, um, she was kind of, you know, I'm not saying she's shady, right? But, you know, when she first came, you know, it's like, what's that? ABB? AB, AB, Asian baby? ABG, ABG, right? Asian, Asian baby. You know, she had that kind of look, you know, blonde hair, low, low, really low cut shirt, right? And then uh, high, really booty shorts going on, right? And, and I, when she came, you know, people, a lot of glances, a lot of glances, right? A lot of different glances. But we didn't say anything. You know what? Because church is church, right? But here's the thing. Here's the thing. That didn't bother me. I didn't, it didn't bother me what she wore. What bothered me, what bothered me was this, is that I knew what the parents were saying. Because I knew the word slut in Korean, right? I knew what it meant. And every time she walked by, she didn't speak Korean very well. I said, they would call her a slut, right? And I was like, what? You did not. And they didn't think I know either. But I was like, you know, I, I kind of like, hmm, all right, <laughs> all right. And so, she, and then she, she, she came with me. I, Pastor, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but I kind of feel like, I kind of feel kind of a little judged here. As a girl, you just wear whatever you want to wear, right? Go lower if you want. You know, just, just, <laughs> just piss them off if you like. Just, you know, wear what you want to wear. And, and always get that kind of, ooh, look at that slut. I mean, like, it's weird. Like, I'm like, dude, are you for real? What if an actual prostitute walked in here? Are you going to just like, oh, slut? And she's like, yeah, I am. What you got? What you going to do about it, right? What are you going to do, right? When an actual person comes in, that actually is a prostitute, you know? But they, 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 they judge like that because why? We've been taught and we've been programmed to think that when you enter into the house of God, you have to have a certain look. You got to be a certain way for God to receive you. You just come as you are. You're free. You know, she actually didn't end up um, fixing the way she dressed. Not because, not because of what they said, but because God's word began to convict her heart. Because I remember I was, I was sitting next to her one time. We were at the mall. And I said, so you know why? Like, I don't mind what you wear, okay? But let me tell you, when you wear something like this, you have to understand that guys are going to look at you and they're going to lust over you. It's like, no, no guys look at me, you know, like being that girl. I'm like, no, they do. Let's, let's do an experiment, all right? I want you to sit right there, okay? I'll sit right here and let the guy walk by. Just as the guy walked by, I want you to look in their eyes, okay? Just look in their eyes and see what they're looking at. And she's like, okay. And, you know, as the guys walk by, they, they'll, they'll catch a glance first at her, and they'll look down real fast, and they'll look over. And I'm right there, and as I'm, like, staring right at them, it's like, like I see you seeing, looking, right? They'll kind of walk away real fast. Like, I said, see? She's like, no, that's not like all, all the guys did. Like, let's, let's, let's keep going, right? Five out of five guys, right? Just, like, they come and give her a little glance, and she's like, She's like, do guys really do this? I said, yes, they do. Guys are dogs. I'm sorry, right? But secondly, hun, right, the worst part is it's not the fact that they do this, that they see you as an object, which is wrong as it is. But the second part that's really bad is that all the brothers who are trying to overcome this issue, when you walk in like this, it, it, it gives them harder time to overcome their problems, right? It, it makes it a little bit more difficult for them, you know? If you love them, love them. Right? And then because of that, because of just that word and what God's doing in her heart, she's like, she was convicted, right? Covered up a little bit better, right? Not as low. Maybe, maybe not like three, but maybe up here a little bit. But, you know, it's, it's that heart. It's the heart of change, right? Because she didn't change because she was judged, right? She was changed because she knew who she was. She didn't have to be a certain way to be loved and accepted. She knew exactly her identity. She was able to come in freedom before Christ. You guys follow me? True Worship is freedom. Do you come into the service, into EM service, young adult college service, do you feel free? Right? I hope you do. My prayer is that you do. My prayer is that you can sit here and be a part of this family and not feel like you're going to be judged by anybody. Right? It doesn't matter what you wear, where you came from, what you did. You come into this house worshiping God freely. Right? A true worshiper is able to do that. That's true worship. A lot of times you fail to discover God is because you come with all these walls. You come with so many walls. God, God, I'm trying to get through, but why do you put up so many masks for? Why are you playing all these games? I want to speak to you. I want to speak to you. 
but I can't speak to you if, you, if you're as long as you keep wearing these masks. Lay it down. True freedom, true worship is freedom. It's not about, it's not about how you look and how you act, right, to be accepted. Second, true worship is spiritual. Look at the verse 2 and 3 because we're going to keep comparing. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, right? In compare to verse 3, uh, for it is we who are the circumcised, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus. Men who do evil versus those who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus. Do you know it's evil? Do you know it's actually evil when you worship God with style and method? When the worship of God is all about the style and the method, the lights got to be a certain way. The, the volume got to be a certain way. The ambience got to be a certain way. Do you know that's actually evil before God? Right? He said to, in the book, uh, he said to, to his people, he said, I am sick of your moon festivals. I am sick of all these things you give to me. I am sick of all of these actions that you give, these methods, these celebrations. I'm sick of you doing all of that. What I desire is the obedience of your heart. See, true worship is spiritual. True worship is not the outside. True worship happens on the inside. You see, a lot of these guys, a lot of the, the Jewish people, they believe that if I can set up everything right, if my technique is good, if my method is right, then God will then answer me. Right? If I do things the correct way, then God will answer me. Right? If I have everything set up well, then God will answer me. But God... In his heart, he says, that's not real worship. You can never discover me like that. The discovery of me is this. Can you hear my word speaking? It's a spiritual thing. Do you hear my word speaking, right? Is my word speaking to your heart? Is it changing you? And are you responding to it? That's spiritual worship. Spiritual worship is that you can hear God's word, reflect upon it, be convicted by it, and then change. You're worshiping Jesus Christ, as he speaks into your life, convicting you of a certain thing you're doing, convicting you of who he is, are you responding back to it? Or are you thinking this? If I show up on time, if I do my thing, God will respond to me. What does this look like in church? It goes like this. I go to church. I sit in my spot. I know exactly. Sometimes I'm so used to knowing where people sit, right? Like, if I sit in my spot, if I sing, if I pay attention, if I sing my decimal a little bit higher this week, right, if my prayer is a little bit louder, right, if I pay attention, if I look like I'm paying more attention this week, surely God then will answer me, right? If I put my offering, if I get up and I put my offering in the basket, if I take communion, then God will meet with me. That's, that's our mentality when we come to worship, right? These guys, they are what? They do evil. They do evil because they... They, they think the method is going to save them. They think the style is going to save them. They think the act of it is going to save them. And Paul is saying, don't do those. Watch out for those guys. We worship by the Spirit of God who glory in Christ Jesus. See, true worship does this. True worship is a spiritual thing. It's an encounter. You come to a Sunday service. You come before God's word during the weekdays. You come, you encounter your God. You encounter Jesus Christ in the midst of the message, in the midst of the singing, in the midst of the people. You encounter Jesus, right? You let his word speak to you. You let his spirit convict you, and you let his strength move you. It's all about him doing it, not you doing it. You guys know when you guys come to service, and then the word of God speaks, and all of a sudden you guys feel that conviction, like, dude, like, did we talk this week? How did he know, right? That's Holy Spirit speaking, to your heart, convicting you. And when you respond to that, that's spiritual worship. That's worship. Let me give you an example. You know AKPC? We took AKPC to our retreat this past week. Any reason why I took them there? Right? The, all the leaders came to me, and they were like, Tony, I'm, I'm just tired. I'm so burned out. They had all these reasons to complain. They were just complaining about um, how things are going. They are complaining about this, the, their service. They were complaining about their leadership. They were complaining about everything. They were just, they were just so burnt out. They're the core leaders. I said, how about this, man? You guys planning a winter retreat? And they were like, don't even remind us about winter retreat. We have, I don't even want to think about it, all that work we have to do. I'm like, all right, how about this? 
go back to your church, tell them to come, the, the, ask them if you can come to TLC's winter retreat, right, with Pastor Tony, uh, see what they say. And come just as you are, as bitter as you are, right, as angry as you are, as mess, just come as you are. Don't, don't try to put up a front, you know, they're really me, they're cool, right? Don't put up a front, right? Come as you are and just let God, just receive from God. And they're, they're like, huh, we don't do anything? We don't do anything. Just be in a group. Really? Like, really? Don't do anything. It's like, okay. So they went to the church. They asked their pastor. They asked their leaders. And presumably they said, yes. So, okay, come to church. And they came to the retreat. And that first, I mean, a lot, even on that, on that morning, on, on that morning, I had to convince one of the brothers to come. Because he was like, I don't want to be here. You know, like, it's going to be the same old thing all the time. Tony, it's just retreat, message. I'm just going to, I'm already tired as it is. I just want to rest. Let me have a vacation. I'm like, dude, all right, shut up, trust, come, right? That's all you got to do. Just shut up, trust, and come. And, you know, he's, he's one of those brothers that really, for some reason, like, really, really trust, right? So he said, all right, just because you said trust, all right? <laughs> so he came, you know, so he came up, and I kid you not, even just that first message, I didn't even, I didn't even set the speaker up or anything. I just said, hey, look, my church is going to be there. My old Korean church is going to be there. Hopefully that's okay. He said, oh, that's cool. I did not set the pastor up or anything, and yet that first message, I kid you not, like everything he said, like those 11 who came, they were like, holy, dude, that's, that's us. He's speaking about us, right? Is he like, is this AKPC retreat or TLC retreat, right? Because they're speaking about us. That night, they started bawling. Like you guys were upstairs doing anything. They were downstairs in the little circle. I was like, you know, fixing stuff. They were just crying. They were sitting around just crying about like, Oh, you guys! I think we really messed up with our church, and we need to, you know, set things up because they were, they were, they were threatening this. This is why I, I, I thought it was really serious. They were threatening, telling me we're gonna leave AKPC, we're gonna come to TLC. I said, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> you, you, I'm gonna get in big trouble if you do that. Don't do that, right? You know, in my in my selfish, uh, uh, sinful heart, I was thinking that would be pretty cool, right? Like double, triple my numbers. That would be pretty nice. I have something to say. That'd be pretty cool, right? But I was like, no, don't do that. I'm going to get in big trouble with your pastor. I'm going to get in big trouble with myself, right? Don't do that. So I said, okay, this is going to be really bad. I got to make sure that their hearts change. But I don't know how to do it. I was like, just come to retreat. I'm, I'm going to pray that God's going to speak to your heart. And I kid you not, right? This, today, they were all supposed to come today. They were like telling me, after this retreat, Pastor, we're going to show up at your church on Sunday. I'm like, oh, no, right? But, you know, God spoke. God spoke, right? Because they came as they are, mad, angry, what, whatever, right? And they allow for the Spirit of God to speak. They weren't coming to perform. They weren't coming to put up a show. They weren't coming as leaders so they have to, like, you know, be diligent and uh, uh, on time. They were just coming as brothers and sisters as they were, letting God speak. And when God spoke, like, every message was like, dude, Pastor Tony, like, I swear I'm starting to think that you set this guy up. I'm like, bro, I did not, right? It's God speaking to your heart. Praise the Lord. Go do something about it, right? Go do something about it. That's, that's spiritual worship, right? You, you know that when you encounter spiritual worship, it's like this. You'll notice the, the spirit working when the song comes on and you're singing. And all of a sudden, some of, some of those words just hit your heart like crazy. It's just like, oh, my goodness, this is me. And you, and you just sing it out. You know, you just cry out about it, right? Um, or... or you're, you're, you're sitting here, and the message is being spoken, and you're like, dude, that's, that's to me. Like, that's to me, right? Or you're at home, and you're opening the Bible, and you're reading QTs, and all of a sudden, you're like, what? I've read this like a hundred times, right? but yet this time, this stood out. You know what that means? The Spirit of God is speaking. You're not coming with this facade. You're not coming with a style or a method. You're not coming trying to look right or do right. You're just coming as you are, letting God speak to your heart. And as his word speaks, as Jesus Christ speaks to you, his spirit convicts you, and his strength gets you to respond. Do you respond to Jesus, you guys? Is that you? Do you experience that? A lot of times, joy is taken out of your walk. The discovery of Jesus is taken out of your life. All the time. You don't, you don't taste that God is good. Right? You ever hear people say that? You got to taste that he is good. Like, how do you taste God? That's just so weird. I don't even. But those who know, those who, who somehow taken the leap of faith, right, and just jumped into it, 
just God spoke. They're like, I don't know how this is logical. This is not logical whatsoever, but I'm going to just give it a shot. And you take that leap of faith. You respond in a spiritual heart, all right? You're not asking for God to kind of just keep blessing, but you're going to respond. And all of a sudden, he moves. He moves in your life, and you can just taste it. You're like, holy crap, that's God. Like, that, he just pulled through. It's unbelievable. I can taste his goodness. You discover more of him, right? True worship. True worship is freedom. Come as you are. True worship is spiritual. It's not about the style. It's not about the method. And I know this for a fact. You know, I'm, I'm like, when I first started leading praise back in the old days, right, I liked the, the lights really low in the church. Like, my, my church used to be a big old dome. So we turned the lights. We came through. I did that because I didn't want people, I didn't want to see people's face respond to my off-key singing. That would just make me go even more. But, like, but after a while, I convinced myself I did that because I want to create the right ambiance for people to encounter God. And I remember one of the leaders was telling me, like, why do you keep it so low? You can't even see the words. I mean, that's why you keep playing, out, uh, playing the wrong keys because you can't see, the, can't see the chords. I'm like, you know, it's, it's so that we can, like, allow for people to encounter God. You know, if Jesus was here, this place would be bright. And I was like, yeah, that's true. Um, but, you know, <laughs> right? I mean, if, if I set it up correctly, hopefully, you know, people will encounter. I mean, that's my heart. I, I was thinking about the method, the style, but really to discover your God, to discover who he is, right? It's a spiritual thing. You come before God's word. You, you hear it. You, you, you experience it. Your heart is convicted, and then you respond. You respond. That's how you discover. If you don't respond, you just kind of sit there like, that was great. But no response, you'll never be able to discover, right? It's like, it's like, it's like looking at a brochure for Hawaii and saying, oh, this is beautiful. I, Hawaii is beautiful. But you're never going to, what, experience Hawaii unless you do what? Shell out some money and go to Hawaii, right? You're never going to be able to see the beaches or see how beautiful the water is, how clear it is, until you're actually there. Right? Same thing, when you come before God's word and God's word is speaking to you, it's great, it's wonderful, but you're never going to really discover the beauty of God until you actually respond to it. It's a spiritual act of worship, the Bible says. All right. True worship is freedom. True worship is spiritual. And here's the last thing. True worship is humble. All right? Check out, again, verse 3. This is the last part. Verse, last um, uh, description. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil. Last thing, those mutilators of the flesh. And in comparison to what? And we, and we who put no confidence in the flesh. For it is we who are circumcised, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus, and we who put no confidence in the flesh, they boast about their flesh, we put no confidence in our flesh. Humility. True worship is humility. You guys ever um, know what humble brag is? You know what humble brag? It's so funny. I love humble brag because it makes me, it makes me think, like, do you know that you're, like, hum-? they'll say stuff like this. Oh, you, you say it on your resumes all the time. My biggest problem is that I work too hard, right? You guys read that on your resume all the time? I, my biggest problem Oh, my biggest, I need to work on not working so hard, right? I mean, that's, that's, you say you have a problem, it sounds like you're humble, but you're bragging that what? You're working too hard, right? Or you, or you hear people say in church, you know, I don't know God as much. I just, this past week I only read my QTs like 10 times. You know, it's, it's, I just don't know God as much, right? So what you're saying is, you're trying to tell me you did your QTs 10 times. Thanks, thanks, I appreciate that, you know? Or like, oh, you know what? I mean, like, I'm, I'm so gifted in a lot of things, you know, but, I just, I don't know why I keep getting fired. I keep getting fired. I mean, I, every job I do, I'm just so good at it. I'm like the number one salesman. So then why do you get fired? But I'm the number one salesman. But you know, it's, it's this humble brag. It's this humble brag that we have. And so a lot of these guys, these Judaizers, when they came to worship God, it's a humble brag. They're circumcised, right? And they want to get everyone else circumcised because they're saying this. I have a legitimate claim to my God because, look, I'm circumcised. I'm the real legit Christian. You guys aren't, right? I'm the really, we boast. They boast about what they have and what they can do, right? It's like that parable about that, um, that Pharisee that says, God, I thank you that I can fast three times a day. I thank you that I, I am a man who is diligent in my prayers. I thank you that I am not like that tax collector back there sinning. I thank you, Lord, that you have made me this way, right? 
That's a humble brag. That's boasting before God. Right? Then, you know, the tax collector, the true worshiper says what? God, forgive me, right? for I'm a broken man, sinner as I am. See, true worship is coming into the house of God, coming before God's word and saying, I just love the fact that I can worship you, God. It's, it's a privilege that I can be here to encounter with you. No boast, no thing to brag about, nothing to claim as my power is that I can come and worship you. What does that look like in church? Right? A false worshiper is like this. God, I am a sinner, but thankfully I'm not as bad as him. Right? God, I have done so much wrong in my life, and just would you forgive me? But thankfully that I can't, I'm not as bad as that dude over there. Right? That's boasting. Like God, God's like, what the heck are you talking about? Are you a sinner or are you boasting that you're better than that person? Right? What are you doing? See, a true worshiper comes before the house of God and says, God, there's so much more that I need to know. And I've received better. I, I, am, I have received better than I deserve. Right? True worship is humility before God. True worship is humility before God. We don't put confidence in our flesh. We don't put confidence in what we can boast to people. Now, I always hear people say, you know what, Tony? I go, to, I go to church for the right reasons. I'm like, what's that? I don't go to church to date people. I don't go to church to, like, meet other girls. I don't go to church to meet guys. I go to church for the right reasons. I'm like, okay, what's that? To, to meet God. I'm like, all right, all right. And I said, what do you think other people go to church for? They go to church to meet girls. They go to church to meet guys. And that's, that's the wrong reason. I'm like, all right, that's cool, man. So you're, you're boasting that because you come to church with the sole intention of meeting God. That somehow you're better than them. No, I didn't say that. No, but that's what you implied, right? Let me tell you that. That's not true worship before God. If that's your heart, you need to repent too, bro, right? They need to repent, yeah, for meeting girls at church or meeting guys at church. But you need to repent for thinking that you're better than them, right? So true worship is humility before God. The fact that you are here, the fact that you can hear God's word and be a part of his people and his family, it should be a thankful part. You have to have a grateful attitude towards it. You need a grateful attitude. That, you know, there's so many people around the world that can't even gather together. There's so many people around the world that can't even hold their Bibles. I mean, we have like five at home all over the place that we don't even touch, right? You know that. There's one in your bathroom. There's one in the bottom of your floor. There's one like in your coffee table somewhere. There's ones everywhere. And people are dying. They're, they're hiding. They're tearing out pages in their Bibles just so that they can have a, a page of God's Word to read. And yet, and yet, we boast. All right. Can we just come before God and say, God, I'm just grateful that I can be here to be a part of you, to be with you, to discover you. And we have the best example to follow, right? Because God doesn't leave us without examples. He left us with the greatest example, Jesus Christ, who, right, worshiped God with complete freedom. Complete freedom. It didn't matter that he was a carpenter. It wasn't matter that he was poor growing up. It wasn't matter that he was basically a nobody, right? He came to God completely free. He didn't come to God with pretenses. He didn't come to God uh, talking about himself. He didn't come to God even claiming that he got some rights because he is God himself. He didn't come to God in any of that way. He came to God simply saying, look, Lord, all right, this is who I am. I'm a man before you true freedom jesus came and he worshiped with true worship with spirit the bible says he did everything by the power of the spirit he did nothing by his own strength he did nothing by a method he did nothing by his abilities he did everything by the spirit of god when he heard god spoke to his heart pick out 12 disciples he prayed overnight he picked out 12 disciples when he heard the spirit of god says go to the cross he prayed overnight he cried about it but then he went to the cross right to discover discover him and he worshiped god with humility with humility to such a part where he says yes though i am god though i am god myself i will take the cross so that they will learn to discover more of you father i do it so that they will discover more of you because up to that point people worship god religiously They worship God because why? They boast upon what they can give God and what they can show. They worship God based upon what they can do before God. They worship God based upon their own personal obligation. But God, but Jesus said, I'm come so that they can, so I will die to show them 
that what you desire is true worship. You desire for them to be free of the bondage of religion, engage in you in the most beautiful way so that you can, they can discover you. You for who you have made them to be. And that means me on the cross, and I will go to the cross so that they can become true worshipers. So when we follow after Jesus, we follow after a true worshiper. You guys follow me? When we follow after Jesus, we're following after true worship. We're not coming with religion. We're not coming with techniques and styles. Right? God answers you because you worship him in spirit and truth. You worship him with freedom. You worship him with humility. Right? I remember, um, last story, I remember, you know, my grandma, again, like, she she always bowed right to the to the, to the shrines and then I remember she, she growing up she told me that I had to bow 108 times north south east and west so I remember one time I was being a smart butt and I asked her like hey why is it 108 why can't it be 106 or 104 or 100 why can't it just be one right save more time why does it be 108 times and then she said just because you have to that's the magic number. Right, so you're telling me if I do 107, he's not going to answer me. Yeah. For reals? If I miss out on one number, he's not going to answer. He says, yeah. I said, that's messed up. <laughs> that's messed up. You know why? Because the, heart, the human heart, the human heart has developed this way of worshiping. Whatever it is that we worship, we, we develop this way of worshiping things, right, in such a in such a methodological way, in such a way that we can boast about it, be like, oh, I've, I followed 108 times. I am a true believer. Oh, you know what? I do this. This is the method. I'm a true believer. You know what? I have to put up these pretenses. I'm a true believer. I'm, oh, sometimes, uh, another story real fast, right? I remember when she, when, whenever she talks about her in the Buddhist temple, she's a disciple of, the, of whatever monk that guy is, and she always, she always compares herself. She says, I'm a, I'm a poor disciple. I'm like, okay, versus what? The rich disciples. I'm like, okay, what does the rich disciples get? They get more attention from the from the head monk. I'm like, for real? No. You gotta know your place, Tony. If you're a poor, if you're a poor disciple, you're not gonna get that much attention from the monk. But you know, you still do your thing. But the rich one gets it. I'm like, that's messed up, right? So you tell me I have to be rich in order to get the more attention. She's like, no, but you know, technically that's how it works. I'm like, dude, that is that's so damning. That's so constricting. That's so. Why is that? And yet we spend our whole life worshiping stuff like that. And Jesus Christ says this, I've come to free you forever to worship like that. I've come so that you will spend the rest of your life in all eternity discovering me. The most beautiful, unbelievable, amazing thing you'll ever discover. Daily, you'll find joy in me. When you worship me with a true heart of worship. And I will die to make that happen. I will die to make that happen. My prayer for you guys is this. You know, would you come before God and would you give God the right worship? Be free, you guys. I've never asked you guys to put up a front. I have never asked it, right? Would you come and would you allow God to speak into your life, to hear his word, be convicted by it, and respond to it? Would you come Stop boasting that you've been raised in a Christian church, that you know all the information, that you're good with the Bible. Would you just come in humility and say, there's so much more I need to know. There's an infinite years of discovery of you that I need to have, and I can't wait to do it. Would you come and give God the worship that will bring joy to your life? When you give God the right worship, it will bring joy to your life because you're discovering him. Heaven is that. You are discovering him for all eternity, and each moment is better than the last. Come and discover your God. Let's come before the Father. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray for this. Let's just spend a couple of times in a couple of prayers. Would you pray for this first? Would you pray for uh, just your heart, right? And how many of you guys just put up so much front coming to TLC, right? So much so that you feel almost like bad when you're not, you spend a bad week doing some stupid stuff and you just, I can't show up to church that day. I'll wait till next week when things settle down. How many of you guys think like that? How many of you guys are like that? Would you just repent of that? Because that's probably the real reason why you've never been able to encounter your God because you have so many walls. How many of you guys are coming to God and just 
thinking that if I sit in the right spot, if I sing the song, if I give my offering, that God now will bless me. Right? Would, you, would you repent of that? Because the discovery of God and his movement in your life is hearing his word, being convicted by his spirit, and responding with his strength. Would you repent of that? None of you guys, you put so much, you put so much weight on the fact that you've been in this church for a long time. You put so much weight in the fact that you grew up in the church. You know all the stories. You know all the lessons. You know all the details. You know everything. And you boast about that. Because of that, you don't feel like you need to know anymore. Everything else is just icing. Would you repent of that? Because God is an infinite God waiting to be discovered. In all of our lives, it's that joy of finding and discovering who he is deeper and deeper. So you just come. Come, repent, come, and surrender, come and acknowledge him, oh Lord. May I worship you. Love my heart, my soul, my strength, and I give you, Lord God, my energy, my time. May I just, Lord, respond. Father, we come before you this afternoon. We thank you, God, for the life that you give to us in Jesus Christ. Because we know that because our Savior died on the cross, we are able to understand what worship to you looks like. It's not about religion. It's not about boasting what we've done and what we haven't done. It's not about, God, the method and the style in which we come to you. Lord, it's not even about all the walls and the pretenses that we make to look right before you. Because of what you have done on that cross, Lord, you have just revealed into our lives that worship is freedom. That we can come as we are. That all the walls and all the things can break. That all the masks that we have can be taken apart and taken down. That we can come as we are because you accept us as we are. That we can come before you, Lord, in spirit. You are doing the change in our heart. You're speaking to our heart even at this moment. And you're convicting us with your word. You're moving us with your spirit. And you're giving us the strength to go. I pray, God, that we would just find that. And I pray, Lord, that we just come in humility. That we will die. That our flesh will die. That we don't take ourselves as, so seriously. That we would not take ourselves so seriously, Lord. We are not leaders in the flesh. We don't boast in our flesh, oh God. We boast in you. We boast in you. And there's so much to discover. There's so much to see. There's so much to taste. There's so much, Father God, that you want us to know. And we spend our lives worshiping you to discover.